okay so uh, another video about the brief discussion and difference between polymerase 1 2 and 3 for prokaryotic polymerases that is uh, poly dna polymerase for uh, e, e coli and other bacteria so uh, so let's talk about it we have already talked about uh, the dna polymerase 1 in uh, detail so if you want to know about the dna polymerase 1 you can check my video uh, that is in the description and also you can search for it in the youtube and you can find dna polymerase 1 by me and I, I hopefully put a link there in the description and also in the annotation so you can get it so this video is majorly about to discuss uh, the differences between polymerase 1, 2 and 3. So there are a considerable amount of differences present between DNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3 and what are those? Let's say let's start with that. So, so polymerase 1, so let's talk about it. Polymerase 1, polymerase 2 and polymerase 3. Polymerase 1 was discovered pretty earlier by Arthur Kornberg in 1956 and uh, so earlier discovery 1956 polymerase 3 discovered later that is 1970 as well as the polymerase 2 1970 it was discovered now the thing was that the polymerase 1 was found to be very much effective and it, it was found to be uh, 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 related with the dna replication process in e coli at the very beginning but after the discovery of polymerase 3 it was understood that uh, the major part for the dna replication process in in bacteria are carried out by polymerase 3 and polymerase 1 and 2 are just the accessory polymerizing enzymes that are present and that's true because polymerase 1 is having some activities like it it is a polymerizing enzyme that means it has two activities one is the polymerization activity another one is the exonuclease activity and that is common for all the three types of polymerase one polymerization activity another one is the exonuclease activity so let me write it here so both of them have the polymerization activity and exonuclease activity but this polymerase 1 has a special type of activity that is called the uh, that is also belonging to the polymerization but uh, slightly dif different and that is uh, that is rna dependent dna polymerization RNA dependent DNA polymerization activity is very unique to polymerase 1 which is not found in polymerase 2 and 3. Now the thing is here if we look here that the polymerase 1 polymerization activity is from 5 prime to 3 prime activity and that is the direction of the DNA polymerization in prokaryote as well as in eukaryote it always occurs from 5 prime to 3 prime so here it occurs from 5 prime to 3 prime for polymerase 1 for polymerase 2 also from 5 prime to 3 prime for polymerase 3 is also from 5 prime to 3 prime so the polymerization activity for both all the three kind of polymerases are the same 5 prime to 3 prime and the RNA dependent DNA polymerase activity is also from 5 prime to 3 prime and that is unique and especially for polymerase 1 not the Pol2 and Pol3. Now the thing is the exonuclease activity here comes the major difference between these three type of enzymes because the exonuclease activity for these three types of enzymes are not the same. For example, it is a genuine idea this is a very very uh, very much you know very common understanding is that if we need to polymerize something from 5 prime to 3 prime now exonuclease activity is required uh, to remove uh, some wrong base pairs or some wrong bases or nucleotides that were added during the replication. So, it is the idea that if, it, if we are polymerizing something from 5 prime to 3 prime and we encounter a problem and we need to cut that nucleotide off and out of this uh, whole process, we need to go backward. So, the direction would be for exonuclease 3 prime to 5 prime. But the, so, so it is kind of common for all of them. The nucleus, exonuclease activity should be 5 prime, I mean 3 prime to 5 prime, and that is found in all of them 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. It's common to all of them. That's true. But the thing is, for DNA polymerase 1, it also have an exonuclease activity of 5 prime to 3 prime, and that is a unique feature again. So, DNA polymerase 1 not only can synthesize DNA from 5 prime to 3 prime, but it can also cleave DNA from 5 prime to 3 prime if it is required. But on the other hand, Pol2 and Pol3 don't have 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity. It has a 3 prime to 5 prime, the normal type of exonuclease activity in it, right? So the, the, here comes the actual major difference between Pol1 and Pol2, 3. Now the thing is the features about Pol1, Pol2, and Pol3. The thing is polymerase 1 
as I've told you, some very important features. And polymerase one is usually required for synthesis of small stretch of nucleotides. It is required for the DNA repair mechanisms because the, during the DNA repair, there are small stretch of gap in the nucleotide uh, that are formed during the nucleotide excision repair or base excision repair. In those cases, polymerase one is required to fill those gaps and seal the NIC. So this polymerase one is also required uh, in the process of NIC translation. That is an uh, important stage. Uh, at the end of the DNA polymer polymerization process during the DNA replication and that part is also provided by the polymerase 1 that is the activity of polymerase 1 it is a very important enzyme indeed though it is not uh, the actual or, or, or the major DNA replication enzyme but it is required for many other tasks on the other hand polymerase 2 was discovered uh, earlier than polymerase 3 but it is not found to be very much effective because uh, the functions of polymerase 2 was not uh, known well and still it is not known very well. The thing is polymerase 2 acts as a backup enzyme that's what we ultimately know now. There are many functions of polymerase 2 are kind of prescribed but they are not confirmed so I'm not going to talk about them right now. But polymerase 2 found to be a backup enzyme during the DNA replication process which entirely helps polymerase 3 uh, to go for because there are enzymes like polymerase 2, polymerase 4, polymerase 5 are found in E. coli, are found in bacteria. Now those enzymes are accessory enzymes which help the ultimate enzyme for DNA replication that is polymerase 3. Now the thing was and the idea was that that polymerase 3 is, is heart of the DNA replication process in bacteria. It is in the heart of DNA replication process in E. coli. So if you look at here the polymerase 3 structure, it is a kind of huge, huge structure molecules. The molecular weight is pretty high for polymerase 3. Uh, so polymerase 3 is actually made up with multi protein subunits and all those subunits called alpha, gamma, beta, tau and those subunits are there and the productivity of polymerase 3 is remarkable because this polymerase 3 can actually synthesize long stretch of nucleotide uh, without being falling off from the DNA strand and that's the important feature of polymerase 3. How? Because polymerase 3 have a special structure called uh, clamp at a clamp loader protein region. Now it has a clamp loader region like hands so if i if i if i draw this image it will look something like that let's say the heart and this is the core of the polymerase and uh, there are the joining section called tau so tau regions like that and then finally it has let's say let's say like that so kind of uh, i just draw a schematic representation of polymerase c it will look something like that and these are called the clamp loader clamp loader protein. Now this clamp loader protein can load structure called clamp which will look something something like this. I mean it will look just like clamps. It has two subunit like that. So what it can do actually the clamp is attached here like this and DNA is in between. So it's just, just like a ring. So ring like structure start to form. So if you look at here the DNA strand will pass in be through these clamp regions. So what it does actually, it can hold on to the DNA strand, the strand template and also uh, the other strand, right? So both the strand, it can hold on to the strand and the strand is passing. So what it does actually, it actually, let's say this is a strand and it can actually clamp that thing. Clamp means just like a clip, it will hold on to the DNA strand so that it will not fall off even after it is stalling in some places. The problem with DNA polymerase 2 and 1 was that there is no clamp loader or clamp proteins out there. The only reason if it stalls, it just falls off. But it never uh, happened in case of polymerase 3. That's why the polymerase 3 is kind of advanced structure. It is a heart of the DNA replication process in bacteria. So that is the unique feature about DNA polymerase 3. It starts replicating and it also have two different, complete different subunits, uh, left and right. And those two subunit sections are for two different strands. You know, one leading strand, one lagging strand. So it is made for that. And both those structures are related with each other. They are held together by subunits called tau. It is called the tau subunit. So the tau subunit is holding it and holding to the actual core. This is the core enzyme region. Uh, of uh, this polymerase. So this DNA polymerase 3 is not only itself capable of DNA replication. It requires many other accessory proteins and accessory factors to come and join to actually participate and help it to replicate a DNA. So polymerase 2 is one of the enzymes which are helping polymerase 3 to est establish that task. 
Polymer is too found to be very much effective uh, during the synthesis of lagging strand of the DNA. It was again a hypothesized model, but it is found to be effective in the lagging strand synthesis instead of leading strand synthesis. And it is found to be uh, effective when the polymer is three stalls by any means during the during the replication process. Suppose due to any, any malfunctioning in the polymerase unit or any problem during this replication, if the polymer is three stalls during the replication process, polymerase 2 start the initiation and they will recruit the polymerase 2 and polymerase 2 then continue that process for DNA polymerase 3. That is that's kind of uh, kind of uh, much more accepted uh, hypothesis right now. That is the function of polymerase 3 right now. So, this in a sense is the differences between polymerase 1, 2 and 3 and the major properties of polymerase 1, 2 and 3. Remember, the polymerase 1 is discovered by Arthur Kornberg in 1956, but rest of the polymers are discovered by John Kornberg, I believe, the son of Arthur Kornberg. So, in 1970s in both these cases. Okay. So, later many other polymerases are discovered like polymerase 4, 5, but they are, I don't think, not, not much important as like polymerase 1 and 3 because these are the two major important polymerases that are found in uh, prokaryotes. Uh, so, that's kind of it guys. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, the subscriber button is there and also one button is uh, up here on the top like my channel logo. So, click it, subscribe it, uh, like it and put some comments. If you have questions, put it. I hopefully make a video on that. So, thank you very much uh, for watching. All the best.